Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Sosbidia Truda, and welcome back to Fallout 2. Well, last time, we made it to the NCR and ran into a little bit of economic trouble, which is, I now possess literally all the money in the world, and as a result of that, I can't afford to give $10,000 to the doctor for a painting of Elvis, which is going to tell me where Vault 13 is, which I already know, but I need to find out anyway, because I just sort of do alright, I just flipping do. Luckily, off-screen... I've nipped all the way back to Reading. I finally found some money in bloody Reading. So I need to go to a literal gold mine to find some cash. And as a result of that, I've now got the money I need to pay the man. Also, I killed some like wolves and rad scorpions. Nothing particularly exciting, but it was enough XP for me to level up. So we get to start off with that today. Right, first things first, science up to 100%, please. That would be just flipping lovely. And then, uh, what do we need next? Because... Uh, I feel like by the end of this, we're going to want to go over to energy weapons. So I should probably start investing there now. I mean, as much as I would love to invest in throwing, just because I find grenades hilarious, no, I should definitely prioritize energy weapons. Because by the end of this, I'm going to want to be in power armor with a great big plasma weapon of some description. So uh, let's just commit for the next few levels to focus on energy weapons. However, the drunken Super Mutant Elmo did actually get melted. I did still do that. So, Dr. Henry, let's start off with you. I did indeed do the test. It didn't exactly do great work. Yeah, it killed him. You said you were planning to cure mutants. You didn't. You just actually uh, murdered him. You misunderstood. I said it would remove their mutagenic potential. The process does seem violent on the system, though. Oh, well, more refining to do. Right, you're a bit of a monster, but rather than actually saying that, I'm just going to ask about my pay. Marvellous. So, I've got a cyber puppy. Marvellous. But I'm guessing you're a companion like any other. So, woof, 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 click, woof. Can you actually come with me? Were I am not a daggett. What's a daggett? I don't know what a daggett is, but he's not one. Right, I'm guessing normal companion rules apply, which is I'm going to need a charisma of six for him to come with me. Luckily, I can make that happen. You see, I've got these lovely mirrored shades right here, and as long as I'm wearing them, that's charisma plus one. And I've also got some mentats on me, so take some mentats as well, and my charisma goes up to six. Marvellous. And now the dog is willing to follow me. I have a third companion and it's a robo puppy. Marvellous. Right, let's just have a little look-see at what we can do with you in particular. I'm guessing you don't use weapons. You just kind of go in for a melee attack that does, right, 10 damage. Which is kind of underwhelming, actually. And also 97 hit points. Which is kind of terrible. Right. I might want to leave you at home so you don't actually die. And yeah, we probably want you to be, let's say, aggressive. Because, you know, as you want to bite people, you probably need to be fairly close by to them. You know what? Let's just custom this dog up a bit. So, uh, if he's wounded, he ought to run away. Distance, he can... Yes, yeah, stay close to me. No, he can charge, actually. You should just charge straight at the enemy and then retreat if you're wounded thereafter. And attack... Whoever's actually closest to you, yeah, just basically go for whoever's closest, that's fine. And as for Kev usage, I'm not allowed to tell him that he's allowed to do drugs. This dog is clean living, damn it. Right, Doctor number two, over to Doc Jubilee. Because yes, on this occasion, I need to get a map off you, and apparently you want to seriously flipping gouge me for it. Yes, indeed, 10,000 bloody dollars for a painting, which is pretty much more money than they have at the Den, Vault City, Reading, and Broken Hills put together. But screw it, the economy doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Here's $10,000. Enjoy being literally the richest person in the world. Thanks, I've been trying to get the money out of salt beef, but that bum never had any. No, I'm not surprised the drunken ranch hand doesn't have $10,000 when merchants don't typically carry more than a few thousand at the absolute flipping most. So I see a fuzzy painting here. Let's actually examine this thing. On the back of the painting, you find a hand-drawn map showing the location of Vault 13. Right, so we've got ourselves a location. 
And I'm guessing maybe this is an alternate route than speaking to Tandy, because maybe she does know where it is, but she knows about the death clause, so she doesn't tell people about it, because otherwise they go and try and find it. So instead I could go and do the Vault 15 thing for her, then she'll tell me about Vault 13. But you know what, we're gonna go and do that anyway, because I'm nice like that. Also, Sulik here, have a painting of Elvis. Right, here we go, we're making some progress now. Back over to the ranch, however, we've spoken to Salt Beef, but I've never actually run into Weston, and I might be able to kill him anyway, because someone points out to the comments, thank you very much for this, by the way, even if you're actually being shot on sight by the bishops, you can get away with doing business with them anyway, if you're wearing something that's sufficiently like a disguise, like power armor, say, because then they don't know it's you. So as a result of that, I might be willing to kill Weston anyway. Yeah, there was definitely a police officer who kind of hated Weston, I'm just not 100% sure whether, yeah, everyone else does. Everyone else seems mostly okay with him, so I'll make my own judgement call on that one when we find the guy. Right, that's the stables down there, that's where Salt Beef is. More houses dotted around here, so uh, let's just have a look see roundy, see what we can find here. Ooh, first things first is Super Toolkit here, so that's what Vault City needs, if I recall correctly. So yeah, if you didn't have that from anywhere else, you can get one of them from here. Marvellous. And if you want to talk to someone, talk to the foreman Felix, there's one of the farm hands over here. Right, so if I want to do work for this guy, need to find a unique character by the name of Felix. Well, not many people floating around here, aside from this guy at the front door, and he does have a unique description. So I'm guessing you're gonna be Felix. And the sheriff told me to come by, said Mr. Weston might have a job for me. So I've got a recommendation of sorts from somebody. Dumonte, that's good enough for me, Mr. Weston's inside. Good, so I can easily get my way inside just by chatting to the local sheriff. Marvellous, and ooh, you've got a lovely big house. Including a private back room I most definitely want to go and investigate at some point. Right, Mr. Weston, let's just see how nice you are and how much I want to keep you alive. I'm Roger Weston, you can't come barging in here, what do you want? And, uh, Bishop sent me. No he didn't, or at least don't say that out loud. I'm here about a job. That all talked to my foreman Felix, and... Okay, I'm here to do a job, Sheriff suggested. Yeah, Sheriff said I should actually go and speak to you personally. Did he say that? I can't remember whether he said that. And Dumont recommended you? Well, that's good enough for me. Something or someone has been raising my Brahmin at night, I need to find out what's up. How about going out there and looking into it for me? I'll pay you for your trouble. Fair enough, I will gladly do that. So, back outside to Felix, and yes indeed, problem with the Brahmin being attacked, because the Brahmin are always being attacked. So if someone or something has been killing Brahmin on the West Pasture, I'll take you out there, you take care of it. Right, we're going to a unique map, marvellous! So, me and all my friends, we're just standing around. Time is just passing, I'm guessing whatever this is. Uh-oh, we've got- wait, what? Okay, that's Death Claws. That's- that's talking Death Claws. And Death Claws, you just- they decided not to attack. Because I was here. Okay, do I tell anyone about that? Because I feel like I shouldn't tell anyone about that. Because they're going to think I'm crazy. Well, the Death Claws have been spooked off for now, so- I guess we nip back to, uh, yeah, where we need to go. So, back to the Weston Ranch, please. We'll just go there directly and have a chat with Felix, and I guess we tell him the truth, and he'll probably say I'm an idiot and refuse to give me more work. Luckily, my character's fairly intelligent, so we're skipping the bit where we mention the death clause and just saying, hey, if you post a guy out there, they won't attack, he doesn't need to do anything, but it's going to flipping work, so... Uh, here you go, nice to meet you stranger, 1000 experience, 15 karma. Right, so, uh, I'm gonna be honest, he offered me a job, I uh, did it, he paid up when I was done. Some people don't seem to like him, but I've not really got anything against him to be honest, so uh, for the time being at least, I am not killing him. And luckily that locker room is wide open, so I can explore what's going on here. Nothing too major. Basic leather armor basically going for free, so if you've rushed here at the beginning of the game, that'd be nice, I suppose. Uh, I'll take the ammo, because, yeah, now that Sulik is using burst fire on that new 10mm gun all the time, uh, he is burning through that ammo very quickly. In fact, actually, this is all good stuff. This is literally all of the ammo we use these days. Right, nothing more from Mr. Weston or Felix, so, yeah, unless I'm actually planning to kill him at this point, nothing more I can do as far as I can tell. So, uh, fair enough. 
Have a nice life, Mr. Weston. You seem fine to me. And once again, Sulik has something interesting to say. Lifting rocks more than slugs. So the slugs might not necessarily mean anything, but... Lifting rocks. Okay, do you mean like literally, like there's something good hidden under a rock, or do you mean figuratively that there's loads of dark secrets around here? Because I figured that out from the fact that everybody's constantly trying to assassinate everybody else. May as well check in with Salt Beef while I'm passing by, however, just to see... No, apparently I've forgotten who he is. Marvellous. I was wondering if I could just give him his portrait back, but no, sadly he had no interest in that. Right, in which case, back into town here, and I think there's one direction I have not been in yet, which is, yeah, down south over here, to the great big government buildings, where, what was it, Gunther and Tandy are hanging out. Assuming I'm allowed to, are there special rules or something? Okay, well no one seems to be uh, stopping me, so... Uh, yep, there's definitely more people here, gotcha. So we've got ourselves... Ooh, nice big statue, lovely. In fact, hang on. Is that a vault suit that statue's wearing by any chance? There's a plaque at the base, it reads, To the stranger in Vault 13, What doesn't exist we must sometimes dream and let our dreams inspire us to greater heights. So it was with the stranger and his belief in the legend of Vault 13. So, uh, they believe that the person who Tandy met, who actually rescued Tandy on behalf of Aradesh back in the days of Shady Sands, was not actually from Vault 13. Or at least that's the official story. I'm guessing that's just a tale and Tandy actually knows the truth. Ah, but we do have a bit of a problem here. Some of this territory is actually blocked off, so you can't just wander into the very highest security buildings. Okay, hang on, what's this over here? Hall of Congress. Okay, that looks like we can go inside, or at least it's not behind a laser grid. So, uh, say hello to the guards. No one seems to be challenging me right now. So, into the Hall of Congress we go. And is anyone going to yell at me? No one's yelling at me yet. That's a good start. And yeah, that's the only other building here, because this road just sort of goes into a wall for some reason. Okay, why did you build this road directly into the border wall? Right, couple more basic cops here. You're dressed a bit differently, though. Welcome to Congress House. Right, marvellous. So, uh, how can I help you? I'm actually here to see President Tandy. I know for a fact she's looking for work. So, yeah, I heard she's got a job needing to be done. Oh, that? Talk to Mr. Gunther in the back. Alright, fine. So, I've got an invitation to go a little bit deeper in already. And, uh, are you Tandy by any chance? And... Elderly woman, lean and weathered. Right, that's Tansy right there, though. Hang on. If that's the president right there inside this building, what exactly are you hiding behind a laser grid? Because that would suggest there's something over here even more valuable than the flipping presidents. Well, let's start off with Mr. Gunther anyway. So, uh, hello over there. And I'm here to see President Tandy about a job. Ah, yes, yeah, she's instructed me to send in anybody asking about it. You're buzzed in. The door to my right. Marvellous. So nice and simple. We get to speak to Tandy. Now, you've got to have an animated face and a voice or whatever. You're too bloody important not to. I mean, you had an animated face and a voice in Fallout 1, and you're actually a very small character in that. Hello there, Tandy. I'm Tandy, president of NCR. My boys tell me you're looking for work. What are you handy at? Ooh, marvellous. How am I going to introduce myself? Because remember, there might be all sorts of secret counters going on in the background where they're checking, like, how polite I am, what I say and what I don't say. Got to be very, very careful here. So, uh, I've been told I'm good with words. That's definitely true. My speech is nice and high. I've passed a fair few speech checks. So, uh, let's start off with that. You sound like just what's needed. Okay, good. She likes that response. So, tell me about the job here. We need some computer parts from our old base, Vault 15. Problem is, their squatters there won't let anybody buy. Somebody has to convince them to let us in. Or just bring back the parts. You up for the job? Right, parts inside Vault 15 could sort it out peacefully, but as long as the parts make it back, she doesn't really care if it goes violent. You know what? Very happy to help out. Fair enough. Do it right and there's a reward. Alright, happy to do that, but let's ask a few questions first. Well, I got a little time to spare. And yes indeed, let's start off with the old stories. So the Elder told a story about the Vault Dweller and someone named Tandy. Let's see if you remember that story and whether you know that person was from Vault 13. Because everyone else seems to believe that's just a fairy tale. Lord, that was a long time ago. 
Hardly remember who I was then. Just a naive girl. The one you call the Vault Dweller. Is he still alive? Nope, long dead I'm afraid, but he was my ancestor. Yes, there's a resemblance. You've got the same fire, too. I was always afraid that he was nothing but a skeleton somewhere in the desert. Oh, go on, tell me the story of the original Vault Dweller from your point of view. Well, I was pretty young when we met. There was a gang of raiders, the Khans, who had gotten hold of me. Things were looking pretty bad when all of a sudden this stranger shows up and rescues me. Your Vault Dweller. Sadly, she does not confirm whether he, like, negotiated or broke her out with explosives or shot everyone, so that's a bit of a shame. I used to envy him that. I wanted a life of adventure, but I stayed here and took over as mayor when my dad died. Been running this place and building NCR ever since. Guess it turned out to be a pretty big life after all. And yes, indeed, I'm guessing the Elder will be thrilled to hear you're actually still alive too, because she heard stories about you as well. Get to it, I can't spend the day with you. Alright, alright, I'll hurry it up, Tandy, don't you worry. Okay, now we're getting into some interesting stuff here. So, uh, she's not keen on you, Reno, whatsoever, and says she wants to take a very hard line with them. And yes, indeed, Congress has got to understand that. Tell me about the bishops, because uh, there's clearly a connection here. Well, I'll talk to a snake, but don't expect me to hug them. If you see any of them, you can tell them that too. And what about the rumours the NCR's making a deal with them? No point trying to keep secrets around here. We're negotiating with New Reno for membership in the NCR. They should have some pull with places like Vault City. Alright, so in all fairness to her credit, she's pretty open about that. Right, let's move on to the gate, because presumably you know what that is, and you might be able to tell me which of the two vaults is still going to have one. A gek? Like the lizard? We got them all over. Nope, she's doing the old gecko joke again. Okay, here's the big one. Where's Vault 13? Because I think you actually believe it's real and know precisely where it is. Vault 13? Why are you asking? And I'm the chosen one, I'm the descendant of the Vault Dweller, so I know it's real, there's no point in lying. You're serious, aren't you? If we're talking about the same person, he saved my life. <laughs> then vanished. When I start thinking it was only a dream, I go look at the statue out front. And yes, indeed, we already saw the plaque there. That's right. For scaring off the raiders. They kept clear of Shady Sands afterwards, and we got time to get ourselves set up. We made him a hero. Even if we didn't believe a word about him coming from Vault 13. Okay, possibly she is actually serious about that. My dad and Seth searched for years trying to find Vault 13. They died looking. Always said it was west of here. If somebody were to find Vault 13, that'd do us even better than 15. Well, good news. The Doctor had a map this whole time and apparently just didn't know about it. So that's a bit embarrassing for you. Right, let's move on to Vault 15, because last time we saw it in Fallout 1, it was basically just a ruin. Handful of mole rats, nothing major there whatsoever. It's just east of here, an underground shelter from the war. Most families in NCR came from it, so it's rightfully ours. A couple of years ago, some squatters moved in and built a shantytown on the surface. They call it the Squat. They're nothing but dogs in the manger. They can't get into the vault, but they keep us out. Right, so someone closed up the vault at some point. I'm not sure who did that or when, because, yeah, it was definitely open when the original vault dweller went there in Fallout 1, so uh, somebody went out of their way to go and close it, I suppose. And yeah, let's ask her why she hasn't made a deal with the squatters, just to see how open she is to the possibility, because if I can, I'd like to do that myself. I tried. I sent some people down there, but after the first few, they stopped coming back. I can't prove the squatters are responsible either. My boys managed to capture one of them, but he won't talk. Got him locked up downtown. Ah, okay. Someone in the jail. Need to go and speak to him on the way out. Gotcha. And having gone through all the options, something new's shown up. Roger Weston. Congressman Weston? One of the biggest Brahmin ranchers around. His spread's on the west side of town. Just don't bring up new Reno if you talk to him. He gets him going. If you're looking for a steady job, you're not that type, are you? Alright, so he hates new Reno, which is why Bishop wants him dead. Gotcha. Right, that's everything as best as I can tell, and she said she'll pay, but not specifically how much she's going to pay. Right, nothing more I can do in this building, so 
I guess we need to nip over to the other side and see what's going on behind this area. Is anyone willing to speak to me about... Yeah, what this is. By any chance, are you willing to open up to me? Hello over there. Who are you and what do you want? This is government property. Move on, stranger. Right, possibly... The armory, I guess? That's the only thing I could think of that they'd actually try and lock away this securely. We know it's not the power plant, because that's downtown. Right, so uh, something is hidden away back here. Gotcha. So, back over to the prison, and yes indeed, the deputy here, I can tell him I want to speak to the prisoner. Marvellous. So his name is Oswald, that's all we could get out of him. He's supposed to be a squatter from Vault 15, but I doubt it. He's too tough, you know what I mean. Right, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, he's a bad one. Killed two of our men and hasn't said a thing. Alright, any chance I can go and see him? And Deputy Carl is apparently going to open up the door for me. Beautiful. So, uh, let's have a chat to this guy. See if we can just get anything out of him. So, hello there. Who are you? And can we actually do a deal? And um, why don't you just kiss my boots? Right, so... He's not willing to actually speak to me at all. You wasted my time, I ain't got one word to say to you or anybody else. Okay, if I was to punch you in the face or something, would you maybe be more chatty? So he's got himself 60 hit points. Okay, so if I did a little bit of damage to him, would anybody object? The problem is I'm actually very bad at punching. So I'm just gonna... Okay, it turns out I'm really damn good at punching. That's nice. And uh, what the hell, you're trying to kill me. Guard, ain't nobody coming to help you. If you want to live, you talk. Right, okay, he came around very easily. I think I just basically got him with a sucker punch. I'm just a guy, not the guy in charge. That's Darian. He's the one you want. He's got this thing about Shady Sands and that old bitch Tandy. He's got a hideout in Vault 15. Even got the locals thinking he's on their side. That's all I know, honest. So, uh, yeah, Darian's potentially manipulating the squatters in some way. And he's actually inside Vault 15 somehow. Even though Tandy was just saying, yeah, it's all locked up. No one can get in there. So, uh, all right, Darian, that's useful to know. Ah, yes, one other thing. Tandy gave me a history holodisc. So, uh, just get that in my pit, boy. See if there's anything useful there or any propaganda or something. And according to the disc, they've got 700,000 citizens across all of California, Los Angeles, all the rest of it. So, uh, blimey, that is bigger than I thought. Other than that, not too much. Just confirmation people can apply to join the NCR pretty easily, all things considered. And yeah, entire towns uh, can basically volunteer to be annexed, which it sounds like a fair few actually have. And there we go, Vault 13 now on the map, including the surrounding areas, because yeah, it was a map of all that sort of stuff too. Uh, still... Let's start off with Vault 15 here. Tandy wanted me to go and take care of that, so uh, let's just wander in that direction. Nice, easy, short hop. Really nice and fast to the car. Right, so, Vault 15. Hello over there. A cluster of dirty tents and shacks hug a wooded hillside. The people you see are lean and wary. Alright, let's see what we got here and how big it is. Also, should I put guns away, or rather... Should I maybe get guns out? Yeah, massive great shotgun, just to make sure people are nice and quiet. Though, hang on, where's... Where's the actual cave? There should be, like, a cave entrance to Vault 15. That was the entrance to 15. Unless, of course, they've... They couldn't have covered it up, could they? Right, somewhere there's got to be a bit of a cave entrance. Possibly inside that house they've put up. Now, are people willing to speak to me? Yes, indeed, but they're not really willing to say anything. And why do you not want to speak to me, friend? We're a very private community here. We don't want any trouble or interference. Please just leave us be. All right, so uh, they're not shooting me, but they're not exactly being welcoming either. Let's just try the constructed buildings here, because one of these has got to have, like, a little thing I can drop down in. That's just toilets. All right. Try some more people. Some of you might be uh, uniques in some way. Don't bother me right now. Nothing to say to you. Uh, right. So no one's really willing to say uh, anything. I'm guessing we just need to go over to the big house. No, wait. We've got one person who is willing to speak. Rebecca, can we talk privately, please? And uh, sure. Where do you want us to actually go? Uh, we can go to my tent. All right. Follow Rebecca. Because she's actually willing to chat, but she's not willing to be publicly seen chatting. 
So, what's actually going on around here? Let's see what your take on things is. So this place is called The Squad because it was settled by the homeless of many cities. It's not much, but it's all we have. To the west is a city called the NCR. They've known about us for quite some time and never offered us any kind of help or hindrance. Now they're suddenly claiming this area is their ancestral home and they want it back. Okay, fair enough. They keep sending people here to try and talk us out of our home, but they don't understand that we've nowhere else to go, and we don't have the skills necessary to survive on our own if we leave here. Okay, so, and yeah, we know what they want. They want computer parts. What do you want to know? Who's in charge? Do you recognise the name Darian, or is he, like, a bit of a secret? No, that would be Zeke. He runs everything up here. You can find him in the building over there. Right, so uh, you don't know that Darian is secretly calling the shots. So if I mention that name to Zeke, he'll know I'm serious. Ah, yes, and you had a problem too. What's your problem? I had a daughter named Chrissy, who's a bit of a tomboy. She likes to run around, explore, and pretty much stick her nose into things. Chrissy's a good kid, though. She doesn't cause trouble. She's always home on time. She's shown herself to be a very responsible young lady. I let her do as she pleases most of the time, but last week Chrissy didn't come home. I've asked around and no one's seen her or heard from her. I tried to find her myself, but Zeke, he's sort of the mayor here. He stopped me. He said it wasn't safe for me to go looking for her on my own. He'd have some of his men do it. They couldn't find her either. And now maybe Slave has got her. Right, why am I worried that that means Darian's got her? And that's a bit on the creepy and gross side. And now she's got a feeling she's being followed too. Right, so she might be got rid of to tie up some loose ends. And yeah, 100%, that girl's down in Vault 15, possibly because Darian took a fancy to her in some capacity. And apparently someone was listening into this conversation the whole time. They saw the shadow on the tent wall. They just ran off northeast, so directly at the building where Zeke is. Marvellous. Now, there is a woman standing over here in the northeast, so... Is it you? Hello, I'm Dahlia. What can I help you with? Yes, did you see someone go by here in a hurry? And I see people go by here every day. I don't really pay much attention to it. Look, young girl's life at stake here. Play nice. I don't give a rad rat's ass. I'm sorry. I'm just a gun who was hired to stand here and guard this trail. Other than that, I don't know what's going on around here. I did have a daughter once though, and yes, some guy went by here. I let him through because he knew the proper sign, just like the sign you gave me. Go on, I'm out of here. Hang on, what sign? I didn't... I didn't give you a sign, but whatever. Maybe you're just lying because you're sad about the daughter or something. So Dali has now just basically disappeared, and that's opened up, yeah, the path to this little transition. Aha, this could be the entrance to Vault 15, though I don't remember a door looking like that, but whatever, it gets me inside the mountain. We've got ourselves a guy standing here. What else is going on? Nothing much. This is a small area. Right. Let's have a chat to you, my good man, and figure out what's going on. I should shoot you dead, but I'm kind of curious what you could possibly have to say to me. I'm looking for an eavesdropper, actually, although should I say that? No, I'm looking for a missing girl. Hang on, do I want to challenge him or not? Let's not challenge him, because if he knows he's caught, he might just shoot me. So, uh, I'm just looking for a missing girl. You mean the one locked up in the bag that we've been having fun with? No, I haven't seen her. Right, how about you hand over the girl and we talk, though actually, kind of just want to shoot him, actually. Kind of just want to. Yeah, I think we're just going to shoot you, actually. That's what's about to happen right now, so screw you, basically. Did you just run at me? Did you just run at the person holding a shotgun? Well, bloody done. Yes, he's wielding a combat knife, and I'm wielding a combat shotgun, so, um... Good luck, Phil. So he's already been critically hit and no protection on his eyes. He's already pretty screwed. Uh, now one in the penis because apparently you've been a bastard. Now who else is running him, by the way? Good! He's also being shot by Vic right there. More reinforcements coming in, but we should be able to... Did you just shoot me in the back? Did you just shoot me in the back? Yes, you did. You did... Thanks for doing 36 points of damage to me there, Sue. Like, marvellous. Right, let's go five steps in this direction, out of Sulik's path, and then get one aimed shot in. So, uh, we can still hit the eyes pretty effectively. There we go, 14, taking a step closer, 32, the dog's charging in, she just... Okay, I'm not sure who just killed her. Possibly Vic from 10 million miles away. How many people are left? Somebody's in there, but if we're lucky, that's the girl herself. So, uh, can we actually end the combat right now? We can for the time being. Okay, 
check the corpses, check for keys, etc. There we go, one key. Ooh, and very nice, she had a sniper rifle on her. Right, take that if I can, because that's worth a lot of money. And yes, indeed, the other person in there is the girl, and oh! Okay, I set off a trap. Okay, has the trap now been triggered? And appears to be locked. That's fine. In fact, we don't even need the key. Screw your key. I'll just open this by myself. Because I'm lockpicky and that's a bit more XP. Hello there. I'm here to rescue you. My name's Chrissy. I'm from the squat. I was exploring last week when I found the entrance out there. I thought it might be an abandoned mine or something, so I decided to check it out. It's not a mine. It's a secret entrance into Vault 15. The vault is being used as a base for a band of raiders called the Khans. They caught me snooping around and their leader Darian had me locked up here. Right, so, uh, Darian again. The people of the squad are protecting these guys by helping them keep the vault a secret, but they don't know what's really going on. Darian told us the vault was being repaired so we could have a safe place to live with lots of food and water, but that's all a lie. I've been in there and looked around. The vault's dead and the food and water machines don't work. Our food and water's been coming from the spoils of raids against caravans. Right, so the squad's providing cover for raiders without actually knowing about it. Gotcha. Here we go, back to Rebecca and Chrissy. So, job done. You saved my daughter, I can never repay you for your kindness. Thank you. Please wait here, I need to talk to Chrissy, then I'd like to talk to you. Alright, so she needs to have a chat to her daughter, that's fine. My daughter's told me everything. I find it hard to believe that Darren is such a monster after all he's been doing for us. And to think we've been helping him hide his operations as a raider, I can guarantee we won't stand for it any longer. I've already spoken to Zeke, he wants to see you, you should go see him now. Marvellous, so the town is now very much on my side. So, over to Zeke. Do you actually work for Darien, and how much did you know about what was going on? Because I heard that you were actually basically telling her not to bother looking for her daughter, suggesting you know exactly what actually happened. Yes, I do, I act as a middleman between him and the people up here, I'm not very happy about the fact, now I know what he's up to. Look, you knew that he'd kidnapped the daughter, alright? You knew more than you're claiming. And they're saying there's nothing they can do because the raids have got guns, food and water. But, what if you did a deal with the NCR? All depends what did you have in mind. Join the NCR, let them annex the territory, give them access to the vault. In return, they can teach you all the skills you need to survive, and also offer you protection, food, water, all of that good stuff. Not bad, I like it. You've got yourself a deal if you can get the NCR to agree to it. But someone's got to take care of Darian before he realises what's happened and has time to prepare for an attack. Why not get this over with and take Darian out now? You'll have the element of surprise on your side. You know what? I'd rather do that because then I can deliver the parts to Tandy directly as promised and I get first scavenging rights inside Vault 15. And he's also got a key card for me that can help me with that door next to where Chrissy was being held. Marvellous. And that's all we need for now. Beautiful. So, uh, pop that cart in here. Lovely. Right, quick bit of healing later. Now we should be able to use card on door and straight inside. Lovely. Right, only one way to go. Uh, straight down to the bottom floor. So I'm not sure where this leads, because yeah, this isn't the same way you come in when you're actually playing Fallout 1. So, uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to end up here. Aha, uh -huh. a totally unrelated area that wasn't actually in the base game. Got it. So, uh, yeah, the door was taken off at some point. And then there's, uh, there's a cave over here that's got itself a bit of an entrance to somewhere or another. So we may or may not go and have a little Lucy at that. But we can get in this way. How many guards are we looking at? And how tough are they? Right, I see. So we do actually have ourselves the complete vault as it was back in Fallout 1. It's just now uh, there's a fair few raiders dotted about. How strong you guys, by the way? Have a little look see at you guys. Uh, 70 hit points, but combat shotguns. So not so strong, but decent weaponry. Though I am seeing uh, talk to them. By any chance, could me and you have a chat? Or are you going to attack as soon as you see me? And what the, I don't think I know you, who the hell are you? And uh, I've got my ID right here. Do I? Is that like what the key card is? And uh, all right, wise ass, take your best shots. I'm guessing saying my name was Pat wasn't going to work either. And right, I've been immediately hit in the face. Good, good starting point right there. You know what? I should have just shot you on sight. 
But as it is, I'm just going to shoot you in the eyeball with my shotgun. Because that seems to work pretty well most of the time. So that's 72 damage immediately. Yeah, I think you might be in a bit of trouble, my dear. Ooh, more concerning though. Uh, some of the other guards are now actually using Psycho and Mentats and Buff Out. Right, they're drugging themselves to become stronger. That's a concern. Still, probably should go over to... Uh, or maybe not, hang on. Are you guys by any chance about to actually charge forward and try and use melee weapons like a bunch of idiots? You might be, you know. Right, take out this guy and yeah, go for the groin shot. See if we can knock him down. So that is just 10 points right there. Nothing too major. Keep going for that. See if we can actually just knock him off his feet, get a critical, etc. And yes, indeed, we did knock him over. Good, good, good. So, uh, Vic's in a good position to actually just start sniping them. The dog's doing some good work. And when I say the dog's doing some good work, he's not, because he's a dog. But yeah, they seem to be using melee weapons for the most part, because they're trying to run at me. Which is a really stupid idea, but what have you. So, uh, keep shooting them in the dick, eventually. And that's two people down on the ground. Good, good, good. So, they'll be easy pickings for my friends. Uh, go over to Sniper Rifle for slightly longer range. Uh, and take one standard shot against you. And that will presumably do 38 points of damage. That is... Hang on, Vic's taking another shot. And he's actually killed. That was a critical right there. You get up, but... Sulek. Sulek, you're not getting out guns right now. Because you should really be getting out guns. And they're trying to... Oh, blimey, I just got bloody burst fired. That hurts a little bit. That guy is dead. He was already almost dead. Right, go back over to shotgun as they're charging me right now. And yes, let's just go over to aim shot, please. And straight in the eyeballs. Good, good, good. So 37 hit points. He's got to be in trouble now. And kaboom. My health's looking a bit on the low side too, mind. And they are still coming. Apparently they've heard this noise I'm making. Luckily, Sulik's figured out what a gun is these days. So he's now actually firing. So that's nice. And now we've got another one at long range. So back over to Sniper. Right, this shotgun sniper combo is working pretty nicely. I'm enjoying this. So now I can just hit this guy reliably for about 30 points of damage at extreme range. So he's already very dead too. How many's actually left at this point? And yes, I'm just gaining karma like crazy because I'm shooting bad people. So that's absolutely A-OK. -okay. And my robot dog's also going to eat you now. Though I will just finish you off with a stupidly long range shot. Oh, flippin' love it. Right, so this loadout, these weapons, this is working very, very well indeed. So just reload. And then if I can, end the combat here. And I can indeed. Right, I'm going to do a couple of stim packs. I've got plenty for the time being. We're in good shape. But uh, there's probably more to come yet. Aha! Uh -huh. They're pretty basic, actually. Some of them using even basic 10mm automatics. So, uh, nothing too dramatic here. Giant pile of flippin' shotgun shells, though. That's great. I've also seen several corpses with grenades on them. So, watch out. They might be planning to toss some grenades. Now what's left? One guy right here and one doctor. So he might be willing to actually have a chat with me. But first up, step over here. And you, my good man, are about to be sniped off at very long range. Marvellous. Oh yeah, I'm liking this sniper rifle. This is very, very good stuff right here. Though weirdly this guy is taking not much damage actually. And I'm guessing my dog's going to do, yeah, literally nothing. So that's good. Right, get up close and personal. Let's see if we can just shotgun him in the face. Because for some reason, this guy's proving very resilient to bullets. And that did the job. Marvellous. Okay, that may have been overkill for a guy armed with a power fist. Right, let's go and have a chat with the doctor. Because I'm guessing he's not going to want to fight. He might be willing to talk. So, uh, hello over there. Short man carrying a book in his hands. I'm Dr. Jones, you can call me Dog. What can I help you with? And... Okay, he's offering to heal me. Well, I won't say no, because it does save me with stim packs. So if I mysteriously die, guys, shoot him, please. Okay, so, um, he was legit. He did actually just heal me. So, yes, indeed, are you working for Darian right now? Well, yes and no, it's not by choice. I'm a prisoner here. Darian's getting up there in years and he needs a dedicated physician to look after him. They can't keep me here for his needs. I'd rather be here for the people in the town above. They've got no medical help at all. And there's a lot I could do to aid them. Marvellous. So, 
I've killed all the guards. Congratulations, you can now go and be the town's doctor. Ah, and Darren is the only survivor of the group that kidnapped Tandy back in the day. And that does indeed confirm that canonically, the original Vault Dweller in Fallout 1 killed, well, almost everybody when he was sent to rescue Tandy from the Khan. So obviously Tandy was rescued by the Vault Dweller, but it was done rather violently. Yes, indeed, Darren was the only one to come back alive. And he's also got a dog, which is the meanest, most vile creature on the face of the earth. That's very mean. Every dog is a good dog, but I may have to kill it anyway, unfortunately. Right, into the elevator. How many floors do we have? Right, we do still have a couple of floors available to me. So uh, this should be a basic storage floor. Okay, I'm surprised you guys haven't shot first. But um, as you've decided against it, I guess I'll just shoot you in the eyeballs. Right, number one is almost dead. And there we go, finished off, well done. Time to take out the rest of them. I've been shot at point blank range, but barely any damage being done. And these guys are flimsy enough, even my dog is doing good damage. So dear, oh flippin' dear. Yeah, a whole bunch of people running in right now. So right now we're in like the dormitories. And I think one of them burst fired one of their own to death. There's actually, there's quite a few of them actually. <laughs> guys, we're a little bit crowded right now. Yeah, there's definitely a giant pile of guards that are actually just um, shooting each other at the minute, so that's nice. And overwhelmingly, they're using assault rifles, basic armor, 70 hit points. Nothing we can't basically completely shoot apart. This should be absolutely fine. So let's just finish off this guy. He's exploded. Marvelous. Over to sniper rifle on grounds of range. In which case, yeah, just start taking them apart, to be honest. And that has got to be... Okay, I missed apparently, but 34 hit points. You're not dead yet, but you're going to be... You're actually trying to kick me, aren't you? Right, good job, you mad bastards. So, you're going to go down nice and soon. The dog's got to finish you off. Come on, how much health do you bloody have? I know you've only got 70 hit points. Right, okay, hang on. Who's the best target here? You are almost dead. You are pretty full strength, all things considered. You're not so full strength. Okay, I think I know what we need to do. I meant to hit the red button, not the inventory button. But whatever, I guess I'll do a stim pack while I'm in here. You know what? This is fine, because if I just come out of aimed mode, I can still get two shots in, because bloody hell, I get a lot of shots in these days. So you can just die right now, and you can take a bit of damage. If we're going to get lucky, that was only 12. It's not bad. And now Vic's backing off to take a sniper position, which works for me. I'm taking a bit of damage, but honestly, it's light stuff, really, with this armor on it. And, okay, I've also just been shot. The dog's not shooting me, though, so that's good. Yeah, they're just running in at this point. Marvellous. Right, okay. Over to aimed shots, please. Uh, should be able to finish off this guy. He's turning away from me, so I guess I'm shooting his eyes through, like, the back of his head. So we've got a bit of a trick shot going on. And you as well. Ooh, you're not actually dead. Vic, I think you're... Vic, I think you're far enough away, actually. And once again, I'm just being shot. Would someone like to finish that guy off, please? And there we go. One person's been knocked down. Well done. And the dog finishes you off. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, we're pretty much done here. These guys are as good as dead. And the last one goes down. I think we're all done here. So just reload, please. Uh, job done. Right, everybody's dead, so remember the lesson of Vault City. Search every room nice and carefully, just on the off chance of some good stuff hidden around here. Here we go, desk in the top left gets me a giant pile of very useful ammo, together with Scout's handbook. Right, as far as I can see, nothing else much here, so down to the third floor. And as we're going into boss territory with Darien, I'm going to temporarily go back over to this pistol, because... It is straight up more powerful. The only downside is, yeah, it doesn't have burst, but I'm barely using burst. I'd rather just use aim shot every shot. Yeah, it's got a higher damage range, slightly better in the range terms. Needs to reload a little bit more often, but not a huge amount. It's definitely a very, very good gun indeed. So uh, we'll use this if we can. And down to the bottom floor where Darren awaits, and I assume the parts do as well. Okay. How much do we have in here, just so I can actually scout this out? So, uh, four over on that side. Uh, nothing too dramatic there. There's the storeroom. Uh, two guys in this room over here. Then around over here, we've got ourselves five or so there. And I assume one of you is Darian, but I don't know which one. 
And I think they've realised we're here. Okay, in fact, oh, everyone's realised we're here. Because I went into combat, they've all started using their drugs and whatnot. Okay. And right, you decided to try and stab me, did you? Good call. Good call right there. I don't like standing where I'm standing because Sudik's totally going to shoot me, but, um... It'll do for now. Right, you guys, right in the eyeballs, please. Yeah, you know what? I think this gun's gonna work just fine. Especially as, yes, that's one kill and one person down on the ground. So that's just absolutely marvellous. And Vic just put away his gun, then got it back out again for some reason. More people are just running straight at me. You've lost so many action points because you're getting up. Then you're gonna try and punch me. Okay, good luck with trying to punch me. Good luck with that. They are all running in right now. These are, yeah, these are the guys from the left. So we're pretty much just picking them off as they arrive. So you can just get murdered in the eyeballs. And you can also get, ooh, no. You can be murdered in the groin. See if we can knock you over. But sadly, we did not. And yeah, it's a bit dark in here. So I think uh, Vic's chance to hit is a little bit lower than it should be. And uh, I've been shot for, oh, five. Oh dear, that's not very good. That might be a bit more worrying, mind. Uh, that's a 32. And oh! Well, you just got lucky. Fine, whatever. Right, let's try this again, shall we? So take a nice shot at... Oh, you're a bit far away in the dark, actually. Right, one standard shot at the torso. That's all absolutely fine. Just one basic shot is A-OK. -okay. Just basically shoot this person a bit. They're very, very wounded already. I'm just going to step inside here to protect myself from the corridor. He's going to do a stim pack and a double stim pack, in fact. That's all absolutely fine. I'm just going to aim shot you right in the eyeballs. As you get closer, you'll be fine. They do a bunch of drugs. I need to get out of this corridor. You, you pulled out a gun, then punched me anyway. Good work right there. Well done. Right, go into aim shot. She's now at point blank range. And now we should be able to just straight up murder her. Marvellous. And you can get shot in the penis, but not enough to kill you. Right, momentarily we'll be able to move into this side room. We'll be fine. That's some lovely work murdering that guy, by the way. Very well done. And another person explodes right there too. Good. How are we doing right now? I could take a shot over there, or I could reload this gun. Probably best I reload this gun. Because they're so obsessed with shooting me. If I actually just take a bit of a step back, that probably works, actually. Where do I want to be right now? Yes, here seems like a good spot. Because then they're just going to run like idiots straight at me. And basically I've just set up a firing line for Sulik and Vic right here. So this is marvellous. Sadly, I'm not quite in range now. Oh, Vic's going to start shooting me. Right, the problem is I've just actually stepped into the firing line. But screw it. Couple of bullets over here. There's a 30. And that's a 20. So he's very wounded already. They're continuing to try and move in. That's a sniper rifle shot. Okay, now this, this is working a lot better, yes. Right, wave one murder, giant pile of karma, because these were bad people, so it's A-OK -okay to murder them. And in which case, probably, end the combat, do a couple of stim packs, reload the guns. Yep, we're in good shape for the time being, lovely. And don't forget my favourite room in any vault, the storeroom. Because the storeroom's often got some really lovely stuff in it, so uh, let's see what we got here. And the answer is, uh, right, those are the parts. Good. So we've got what we came for. We could at this point just walk away. But no, I think Darian needs to die. So as it turns out, there's a computer here in Vault 15 that can tell me the location of Vault 13. Which um, didn't charge me $10,000 for the privilege. So uh, possibly I should have just done this. Right, one more thing left in that case. Need to figure out which one of you... Uh, is, ah, you're the older guy. Right, older man means you. Give him a quick scan here, and he's still only got 80 hit points. Right, so even though he's the boss, he's not that terrifying. So him and four bodyguards. Though some of them might actually be wearing proper combat armor at the back there. Yeah, you've actually got 94 hit points and proper combat armor. So uh, high chance to dodge all of that good stuff. Watch out for those two. They might be a bit more on the dangerous side. Right, open up the door and then immediately into fire mode, please. Uh, apparently, ah, yes, of course, your dog. Hang on, uh, scan the dog too. So, uh, right, it's only got 14 hit points. I feel a bit bad about shooting it. I know it looks like it's grinning evilly and whatever, but it's like, you know, it's a dog. 
I like dogs. Right, okay. Sorry about this, but... Okay, my character doesn't want to shoot the dog either. There we go. The dog is dead. I'm really sorry about that. He's probably going to be... Sorry, I just got five karma for killing a dog. It's not the dog's fault it's evil. It's Darian's fault. Right, reload and see what happens next. Because probably Darian's going to shoot me and I'm going to flipping deserve it. And uh, long range fire. I forgot to heal up. What the hell has he actually got on him? He's got a really, really big gun. Right, I see. He's going to try and destroy me with a flamethrower. Right, I deserve that, yes. Okay, let's see if we can just take him out with one shot to the... Uh, no, for some reason I can't hit the ice particularly reliably. Can we knock him down with a... Did I just miss? No, I just... Wait, what? Okay, I just killed somebody else. Who did I just kill? I just killed somebody else. That's fine. I accidentally shot him in the penis. Okay, what we need to do right now is heal up and then back off a bit because he's got a flamethrower. There we go. Just run away, run away, run away. Vic's in a good position to start sniping. They're all running into the doorway. He's not fired on me yet. Good! I think you just murdered him with a burst fire. That new little RCP-90, whatever it is, that's doing some good work. Also, I just picked up 6,000 experience points for killing Darian, so that's good too. So, you can just go down. I shot will hopefully finish you off and... Okay, um... Apparently he's making witty comments from down on the ground. That's lovely. How about the dick? If I shoot you with the dick... Right, you don't find that so amusing. And now finally there's these two elite guards. But at this point, they're running over to me. We should be able to just take them out no problem whatsoever. Though the dog's not very useful right now, unfortunately. Okay, move over to... Yeah, the guy who's already a bit weak. And 86% in the eyes. That is 24, no critical. Go for another... And sadly, no critical again. Still, we're doing some good damage here. He can't keep doing this forever. He's trying to spam stim packs. He's also burst firing into me for... Wow, only 10. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right, whatever they're armed with, which I think is just assault rifles, it's not very good. And go over to... Actually, you know what? This thing's pretty powerful. Reload it, then just do two standard shots, because that's only eight action points, because bloody hell, I'm liking the bonus fire perk. And he just actually explodes. Just got a very lucky critical right there. Beautiful. Last guy. Does he die too? Yes, I think I just saw some blood spreading out. Job done. Well done, lads. Now, let's actually check, yeah, Darian himself and his guards and whatever. Ooh, super stim packs. la -di da In fact, I think that might be... Was that Darian? I guess that might be Darian because he's not dressed like his guard. Yeah, over there, that must be Darian. Though it says... It says Darian's guard. Wasn't that Darian? I could have sworn that was Darian. No, this is Darian with the flamethrower. Right, so we had some drugs, $300, some beautiful stim packs. Everything is good. And once again, I can just use the punching bag for some bonus unarmed if I want to. Uh, what about his evil dog? I feel really bad about the evil dog. I'm so sorry, Darius's dog. And here we go, Darian's Compute Terminal. You access the computer and quickly scan all the available files. Among some personal journal entries, you find several detailed reports on the NCR. It seems there's a spy on the council. Right, we've got something interesting here. There we go, confirmed to the doctor Darian's dead. He's thrilled, 250 XP. He's going to be the doctor of the town, so everything is lovely. And Zeke's perfectly happy to honour the deal. Just need to get the NCR to send over a representative. Shouldn't be difficult to talk Tandy into it. Got the parts. Everything is looking hunky-dory. Okay, Tandy, me and you have a few things to talk about. Back, are you, stranger? So the job's done? Do we have access to the vault? Yes, you do. All taken care of. Raider's dead. Here are the parts. Those guys want to do a deal and join you. Basically, I have gone above and beyond. But there is a bit of bad news, too. So they finally got reasonable. I can bull the Congress into sending supplies and techs. You sure we can get into the vault? Absolutely. Not only is it open, I can give you a key card for the back door, and everybody in there is dead. I've always believed in fair pay for fair work. My assistant will square things up. Yeah, small problem, though. Somebody was feeding them information. Damn. The only person who knew all this was Fergus. I'm not suggesting anything, but maybe Gunther should know about this. Alright, I'll take that up with him. Also, who's Fergus? 
Oh, there we flipping go. I've presumably leveled up and everybody is gained in their abilities. So my team is getting better too. And $6,000. Beautiful. Now, someone named Fergus. Who's that? Fergus, I don't believe it. Take a look at the disc. I'm sure that'll settle things up right there. Looks solid. Look, we'll take care of this. Here's $4,000 for the info. Right, whoever that is, they're going to take care of it themselves. Marvellous. It's nice for somebody to sort out their own problems for once. Look, this isn't a good time. In fact, I think Madam President would rather not get you involved in anything else. Thank you and good day. Right, for whatever reason, they've decided not to get me involved anymore because possibly, you know, I end up killing people quite a lot or something of that nature anyway. Still, in front of the statue of my own ancestor, one more thing to do. Oh, and even better, it's a perk level. So, bonus move is still tempting, as of course is bonus range damage, because plus two base, start multiplying this out with criticals, that could get really, really nice indeed. Plus five to armor class with dodger, so basically five percent additional chance to dodge. Not spectacular, but not bad either. Alternatively, I could just take more criticals again for a further five percent. That feels pretty good, if I could just guarantee more criticals, I could definitely be killing a lot more people. Yeah, I'm going all in on criticals. We're just going to take more criticals again. And with that, my critical chance is up to 17%. Oh, that's a good base critical chance right there. And on top of that, stick to the plan. Boost energy weapons at least a very significant degree. Right, that's a nice round 50%. And outdoorsman, nice round 60%. Because I like nice round numbers, damn it. Yeah, this character's starting to get somewhere now. This is looking good. Right, good bit of work there, ladies and gentlemen, but I think we know where we're going next. Vault 13 itself. I have paid $10,000 for the privilege, which I completely didn't need to do because it was just in Vault 15's databank, because of course it was, so I probably shouldn't have paid that 10 grand, but whatever, I got a lovely painting of Elvis out of it, so that's just fine too. Vault 13, we need to go and check it out, but we know it is surrounded by death claws. And on the other hand, we know there are talking intelligent death claws floating about. So something very weird indeed might be going on in Vault 13. And we will figure out what that is next week, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here. And then we have got a... I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE! DIE! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.